Hello everybody, in this episode I'm going to be showing you all how to do what they call either dynamic linking or commonly known as round tripping between Premiere Pro and After Effects. You can in fact send clips from Premiere over to After Effects and do the effects in After Effects and then after you work in, in After Effects you come back to Premiere and you will see an updated what they call a composition here inside of Premiere. So let's get started here. What we've got is some footage that needs green screen. It has this uh, kind of car driving up, driving by here and then it cuts to the footage inside of the car that was shot in front of a green screen. We're going to be taking this into After Effects to be doing some green screening. This is not a tutorial on green screening but I'm just showing you how to get it to After Effects and then back to Premiere. So a couple things you can do here. First First of all, I'm sending over a couple clips. What we've got is we've got the green screen here, and uh, I'm going to turn off that top track and then show you what we've got below it. Below it, we've got this video footage. We've got this uh, plate footage here of a car driving, and that's what's going to be filling the background there. And what we've done here is uh, after all these edits were done, after the editor got finished with the edits, we put the these uh, plate shots underneath these other shots here, these green screen shots. So as they're driving, as, as they're driving this direction here, the plate footage matches uh, the direction here. But uh, a couple differences, though, is this footage up on top here was shot in 5K, and the footage on the bottom was shot in, shot in 4K. So this uh, the bottom footage is not filling is not scaling to fit to this 5k space here. So what I can do is I can select all these ones at the bottom, right click and say scale to frame size. So those all zoom up basically. So when I send it over to After Effects, it's going to be the exact same size as this 5k footage. So let's turn this back on. And with these edits, what I've seen some people do is they'll grab everything that they need to send over to After Effects. They'll right click and send it over. I would recommend not doing that. I would recommend working on each individual clip as a composition. And I'm going to tilt it over this. I'm going to lock down my audio so it doesn't send any audio over. I don't need the audio for this. So I'm going to simplify it. And I'm going to actually right click. I'm going to select these two clips here and I'm going to send both of those over to what's called a composition in After Effects. I'm going to right click on this. And another little tip before you do this, uh, what I recommend doing is if you ever need to access your original footage or original edit here inside your timeline, what you can do is you can just basically duplicate these and send those over to After Effects. So I'm going to hold down Option here. I've got these two selected. Actually, I can do this to everything. I'm going to select everything here that I'm sending over to After Effects. I'm going to hold down Option and I'm going to drag up and it duplicates all that footage on top of each other there. So now what we've got is the exact same edits here on top. I'm going to send these over to After Effects and I'm going to leave these originals alone. You don't always have to do this. I find it kind of handy because if you ever need to access the original edit, there it is right there. And the After Effects composition will just overwrite what you're seeing below here anyway. So I'm going to select these two video clips first of all, right click and we're going to say replace with After Effects composition. After a few seconds, After Effects should open up and it'll bring open this um, little save as file here. What it's going to want to do is save that the project that we just sent over here. It's going to want to save that composition inside of a new project here. Uh, right now I'm just putting it on my desktop. You should be putting this in your uh, production folders. And I'm going to call that green screen car. Hit save. And now I'm going to go back to Premiere. And looking at Premiere, look what it's done. It's taking those two clips and it has embedded this uh, composition right here. This is the actual composition right there that it has sent over to After Effects. You'll notice it shows up as pink instead of this standard blue color. Then we have the original footage below it. We don't really need this anymore because now everything we're going to be doing is going to be taken over on this uh, composition right here. So going back to After Effects, let's see what we've got here. What it has sent over. Now this is red footage, and red footage is kind of weird when you send it to After Effects. It embeds the footage from the red clip into its own little composition, and then it inserts it in inside of your final composition that you're doing the effect out of. So it's kind of weird. It doesn't do this with DSLR me media, and I'm not sure why that does it in, uh, with, with red footage. But it takes that red footage, puts it in its own composition. This red footage puts it in its own composition, and then embeds those compositions inside of this composition. And then we have our composition right there and that represents this timeline down here with our two clips embedded in that composition. This footage here is basically uh, your assets so I'm going to organize a little bit. I'm going to grab this footage here I'm going to drop drag and drop it into a folder and call that assets. So what I'm looking at here is my first timeline my first composition that I sent over. I'm going to hit enter and we're going to call this green screen car clip one. Now I can go back over to Premiere and I can select these two and with that project open, you got to make sure that this project stays open in order to add a composition to this project. A project can contain many compositions. Instead of having an individual project for each effect that I'm doing, I like having one project for everything and adding all these compositions to this project. So with this open, as long as you have this open, it won't try to add it to a new project. I'm going to right click on these two clips and say replace with After Effects composition. With After Effects open, it added all of my assets and the new composition down here. I can select all of my assets, drag and drop it in the assets and keep it organized. I'm going to select this clip here. 
Press enter, control C to copy. Go to this one, press enter, control V to paste and arrow back and call this clip two. So now I've got the two clips in there. So I'm gonna do this to the other clips and then we'll get back. So now I've got all four clips and all of my assets right there in that assets folder. So everything's kind of organized and I've got my four compositions right there. And you can simply access these compositions by double clicking and it will open up that specific composition. And if we go back to Premiere and look at that, I've got my original footage down here and then I've got my composition one, two, three, and four in here. Now any changes that I make inside of After Effects is going to reflect those changes inside of Premiere. Keep in mind that the more intense you get with effects, uh, the quicker, the, the longer time it will take to render or load that clip inside of Premiere because it's trying to do the live processing from the After Effects engine. Uh, so now let's just do a basic green screen here. So I've got my two layers here. Uh, like I said, there's not a tutorial on doing effects as much as the round tripping. So I'm going to rename this here. That's my plate. That's my car. If I turn off my car, you can see the plate behind it. So let's do a quick little green screen here. I'm going to grab my key light package here and drag it and drop it onto the clip. And let's do a quick key here. Okay, there's some quick keying in there. And I've gotten rid of, you can see the, uh, this, the green screen in there. I uh, just did some basic cleanup, put the plate back, and there we go. Uh, this is by no means a complete uh, version of this of this green screening here. There's a bunch of different other things we have to do, but there's the basic effect if we play a little bit just to kind of show. Got the background moving by, and other things you need to do is like add reflections and kind of clean things up as, to make it a little bit look, look more realistic. But let's go back to Premiere. And you'll notice now inside of Premiere that this clip here is reflecting the changes that are done in After Effects. Now, like I said, this is 5K footage that we're working with here. So watch what happens as I grab my playhead and I move it right there. It will take several seconds for it to finally update inside of Premiere because it is actually rendering that frame at full quality. Well, at one quarter of the resolution in here, but this is 5K footage and it's doing some kind of heavy effect work. So once you've done that, you'll see the, the changes reflected here. Uh, you can render these things. Keep in mind, it'll take longer for it to render inside of Premiere because it's accessing the After Effects engine. You, bet you can just do it by hitting enter and it will render those clips. And uh, this will oftentimes, if you're doing heavy effects, like I said, it will take a long time. So even a kind of a decent computer here that's got some heavy processing going on, this is going to take like a half an hour for this to render. So I'm going to cancel that. And the round tripping hasn't gotten to the point where your computer can kind of keep up with heavier effects. So this is just kind of good for references and for your editing in here. But what I usually do is a final step. I'll go back to After Effects and I will export these out as high quality clips. I'm going to go to Composition and we're going to add this composition here to uh, Adobe Media Adobe Media Encoder. It will send that composition over to Media Encoder ready to export out here. We're going to flatten this out to a clip here. I'm going to pull this down and there's some several options you can use. If you're if you're using something like red footage or DSLR, you'll want to make sure that your footage is basically lossless, that you're using a lossless format or a very high quality format. And if you're going to be doing this, one thing I'd recommend before you export out, in fact I'm going to clear this. Go back to After Effects here, and then After Effects, I'm going to go to my project settings here, and I'm going to turn this uh, the, the color channels here to 32 bits per channel float point, uh, which is going to maintain all the original colors from the footage, especially if you're using raw footage. If you're using DSLR, oftentimes, depending on the compression that you're using, you can get away with 8 bits per channel, and it will export quicker. But I'm going to turn this project to 32 bits per channel, so when it exports out, this is going to maintain all the color information. There's some other things I need to do with my red footage in here with the raw settings and things to get it exactly where we need to for color correction and whatnot. But I'm going to hit OK, and now we're going to go over to Composition and add a, and add a media encoder. So now we have the 32-bit uh, version here accessing all the original color channels. I'm going to arrow this down, and one I recommend using if you're using red footage and you're on a PC is the DNX codec. Otherwise, if you're on a Mac, I would recommend, highly recommend using the... ProRes codec. ProRes, in fact, will match all of your resolution that you're working with. DNX is a little bit limited in resolution. You can only go up to 4K. It won't go above 4K. So I'm going to pull this. So I've got that set at DNX because I'm on a PC. I'm going to pull this down and find a high quality one. And if you're using RED footage, you're going to want to go with RGB 444. And we're going to go to our 4K settings down here below. Here's my 444 4K settings here. My RGB 444. This is uh, maintaining all the original color information. And I'm going to match my frame rate. And I'm also going to match aspect ratio. Aspect ratio is fairly important if you don't want to end up zooming up your clip too much. But uh, let's go back to Premiere and I'm going to look at my clip here, my original footage. I'm going to look at the aspect ratio. This is 5120 5K footage by 2700. Your aspect ratio is how many pixels you have uh, horizontally compared to how many you have up and, um, vertically. So I'm going to go to my calculator here and I'm going to type in this number 5120 divided by 
2700, this resolution down here. And when I hit enter, it's going to tell me that I've got a 1.89 aspect ratio to 1. For every 1.89 pixels you have going across, you have one pixel up and down. So it's 1.89 to 1. So I want to match that. I want to match that using my DNX footage here because there's a couple different versions of 4K. So I'm going to go back to Media Encoder. I'm going to click here on the on the settings. It'll open up this window and it's going to tell me that this is the highest it can actually export out as uh, as a DNX codec, which is uh, for basically 4K, 4096 by 2160. Let's see if that aspect ratio matches here. 4096 divided by 2160, hit enter, 1.89 to 1, that's it. So that, that matches perfectly there, the aspect ratio does. I'm going to uncheck the audio because I don't need audio added to this. I'm going to hit OK, and it's going to export out that video clip. I can do this to all four of my video clips. I've only green screened one, but now I click on the name, find a location. I'm just going to put it on my desktop right now, but you should put it, once again, in your production folder. And I'm going to call it green screen car clip 01. I'm going to press play and let it encode all my effects, which is just the one that I did. And when this is done, I'll come back and I'll show you the next setting. And when this is finished, I will come back and show you the next step. All right, once all my clips are finished, once all my clips are finished exporting, I'm going to close Media Encoder. I'm going to go back into Premiere here. And what I will usually do is I will do a little bit of cleanup and organization. I'm going to put all my After Effects compositions that it sent over into a, into a folder. Call that After Effects. And I'm going to create a new folder, Control Forward Slash and call that effect clips. And that's where I'm going to put all my effect clips here. So I'm going to select that folder. I'm going to do control I to import. And of course I just put this on my desktop and hit control I to import, go to my desktop. There's the one clip that I exported, import that, arrow that down. There's my clip. Now on this timeline here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down shift and hit minus, make everything smaller here. Then I will grab all my effect clips and bring them in. Like I said, I just have this one, but I'm going to grab it and drag it, drag it on the very, very top there. And now what I have is the two bottom original clips I'm just leaving there. And then I've got the After Effects Composition Round Trip Dynamic Link right there. And then I've got the actual finished clip right there. And then if you find out there, there are changes you need to make, let's say later on, I'm going to close After Effects here, close that down, save my progress. And there's something that I need to change. Say I notice a little mistake in this. What you can do is you can right click on this After Effects composition right here and go to Edit Original. Edit Original will open your project back up and After Effects will open up with the, that project that I was working on before. Now if I do any changes in here, uh, let's just do something dumb like add some text here, add hello right there in front of it. So I've added that to our composition there. Let's show you. Go back to Premiere. And actually, I'm going to turn off the top layer right there because that's blocking everything else out. So I'm going to turn that off, tilt it back to this, and notice it is, it is updated. Now it's showing this one right here because I turned off that top layer there. But if that's what you do and you have to do some changes, you can go back into After Effects. You can do it, go through the same process, export this out. I will usually do it with Premiere Close. I will pr uh, close Premiere and I'll export it out and I will overwrite that original file, those original files, uh, which would be this one right here. That way when you open up Premiere, Premiere will have the reflected changes on your uh, flattened clip up here. But as you bring in the other ones, you can put them up here and you'll have those on top and they'll be ready. And these ones will color grade quite quickly. And one of the reasons why I do this as well, because if you try to color grade these ones or do any, any, anything inside of Premiere, they will react incredibly slow because it's doing all that processing from the from the high quality uh, HD footage or 5K, 4K footage, whatever you're using. So if you try to color grade this at all, it will it will drag unless you have just some big, huge monster computer that can just like devour anything with its video card, then, then go for it. Otherwise, uh, that is the process there. Well, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Thanks.